Welcome to another edition of Intentional Conversations. On Intentional Conversations, we seek to interview leaders in men's ministry to help men grow spiritually and help leaders and pastors to reach men in today's culture. Discussing issues men face every day. It is a program where men's ministry leader interviews leaders in men's ministry. I am your host, Mike Salen, and I thank you for joining us. If you have listened to me for any time, then there are two statements you have heard me say often. One, men are one of the most neglected people groups in our churches and actually in our society today. Two, men need other men in their lives to encourage them in their spiritual walk with Christ and to pick them up when they fall into the miry clay as Ecclesiastes 4 teaches us. As my guest on today's program, I have a man who is one of those leading the charge to encourage and help men to be the men God created men to be. To help men understand it is essential for a man to have another man in his life as a mentor, a disciple, or as a brother who could just lean on as we walk through life. These are dangerous times we are living in, and we need those men to watch our back. So preferably on this program, we will learn how to maneuver through these dangerous times. So as I welcome my guest, let me read his bio to you so you can get to know who he is. My guest is Ken Paxton. He is an instrument technician and an author of a published men's devotional titled, Are You in Need of a Turnaround? A 21-Day Devotional for Men. With over 20 years' experience in the chemical industry, Ken has used his talents and knowledge to deliver real-life analogies to other men in a way that they understand and can relate to. Ken is a warrior for Christ and is committed to changing men's lives and in evident in his delivery and leadership of the 33 series by Terrence Green to hundreds of men. He's also involved in many other speaking engagements around the country, including the Iron Sharpers Iron Conferences and other men's events. Ken is married to Brandy, and they live in Gonzales, Louisiana, and their boys Nick, Kylan, and Logan, as well as Chris, who's in heaven. Ken enjoys spending time with his family, cooking, and fishing. Ken, it's great to have you on the program today. Welcome, man. Well, thank you, Mr. Mike. I really appreciate the opportunity. Uh, it's good to have you on here. It's good to, get, good to be able to talk to you again. I know we've worked together on a couple of conferences, and it's been fun to to uh, to be with each other and, and see what you do. And, and I'm just amazed uh, uh, at the uh, way men gravitate to you uh, as I watched when, at the conferences you were at. Uh, but let me ask you this question. I know I got a couple of questions I like to always ask my guests when we begin. What is your favorite verse, or what maybe a uh, that you consider a life verse, or maybe even a verse that um, that you may hang your hat on in regard to your ministry to men? What is, what is that verse, and why is that verse so meaningful to you? Well, the verse that means the most to me, and I hang my hat on, is Second uh, Chronicles seven fourteen. And it goes like this. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, keyword, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. Mm. That's my go to verse as mm. far as my ministry, my life. And. My second verse I go to is Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. Mm -hmm. And those two verses are my favorite verses in, in the scripture. And the reason why is because I was at the point where I didn't think I had any plans <clears throat> And I had another brother bring me to a conference and, and that verse nailed me. And it was like, hey, I have plans for you. I have a plans for hope. You're not supposed to stay here. I was at a rough, rough part of my life. And I had another brother who gave me that verse and I put it in my wallet and I put it on my dashboard. And then the verse uh Second Chronicles seven fourteen came to, and those are the two verses that I talk about all the time to other men, because that's how God spoke to me through them. And if people turn from, if, if men would turn from their wicked ways, and heal them, and, and ask God to heal them, he, He'll take care of their property, He'll take care of their land, and He'll take care of their future. Because when you turn from your wicked ways, you see the plans that God has for you. Mm -hmm. and the plans that were declared for you. And I link those two verses together, and it means a lot to me. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are two, two interesting verses. And, and there is a lot of impactful information and encouragement in, in, in those verses for, for us to take note in and applications uh, even for us to take note in, in the way we, uh, we approach life. That, that's great stuff. And I appreciate you sharing that. Well, Ken, you kind of alluded to it a little bit, maybe, I don't, not sure, but how did you come to Christ? When I was seven years old, I was in a snapper comet ride and lawnmower accident. And I was in a coma for about three weeks. Wow. And uh, my grandmother was in the hospital room and the doctor was rolling his sleeves down. And she said, you know, uh, Mr. Miss Paxson and my grandmother's name was Mr. and uh, Ms. Richardson. And they said, you know, we, we don't know what hope we have for him. Uh, he might be a vegetable the rest of his life. Uh, he has uh, some brain damage that 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 may not be able to be fixed. Mm-hmm. And he has scars and he has a hip that I got cut about four times and then three times in my head. Wow. And I have a plate in my head today. And uh, my my grandmother looked over that doctor and the doctor says, well, doc, she goes, you're rolling your sleeves down about my grandson. She said, but I'm going to tell you one thing. The good Lord is rolling his sleeves up and he's not finished with him. He has things that he has to do through his life that God has called him to do. And he's going to do it. And with her faith, it really encouraged me at seven years old um, to I I went to church. The next time my pastors came to church or came to the hospital and talked to me and different things. And I got back to church and I really felt, hey, God saved me for a reason and a purpose. I didn't know what that was at the time because I've right. been crazy things since I was seven years old. Right. But that's how I came to realization of Christ and how much he loves me and cares for me. And then uh, I, that was seven. And then I went through some, you know, some rough spells in my own life and I'm 46 now, but I've learned that, but that's when I got baptized and that's when I got saved when I was seven but I rededicated my life when I was 29 years old mm-hmm. after run, after running, after going through some, some trials and tribulations in my own life. I ran a little while, and then I had that brother who gave me a turnaround, and he put me in a headlock, and he said, man, he said, God has so many things for you, and he gave me, and I, I stuck on to those verses, and still to this day, I was, I'm, I've been very strong in my faith, in my family's faith, and with my family. And that's, that's, that's how I came to Christ and came back to Christ. Uh, That's super. You know, it's amazing how St. God, Jesus, uh, traumatic events in our lives sometimes to get our attention and to, and to teach us things. And uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a very, I appreciate you sharing that because that's just another, another tidbit about how God will use a, a, what we and, our culture would think as a, a life changing or devastating event, but yet, you know, as the scripture says, you know, all things work to good for those who love God and called according to his purpose. Sometimes, you know, even the bad events God uses to, to call for his, his, uh, his good and his purpose. And I thank you for sharing that. And that is super. And, and it's interesting that you're using the word turnaround because that's what the word repent means is to Amen. turn around. It's a kind of 180 degrees, and and it's neat uh, about that. And of course, you call your ministry Turnaround Ministries, and uh, and so 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 let's talk about that a little bit. How did you? I know you said when you were young, you weren't sure you knew God had saved you for a purpose. He knew that He had a plan for your life. How did He eventually capture your heart to understand the need to minister to men? Well, I was, like I said in in my bio, I'm an instrument tech, and I work in the chemical plants and refineries in this area, and I was in the middle of a turnaround in my own life. I had gone through a a divorce, and uh, my life was totally in shambles at the time, and I was working in the chemical plant, and I was was working on a level transmitter, and I pump. I was pumping up this level transmitter uh, to calibrate it, and I started looking all over, and I noticed that there was pipe or that was on the ground that needed to be re-welded and put in a pipe rack. I noticed there was wire that needed to be re-pulled. I noticed that there was these big compressors 
that was being lifted by these cranes that was going back and forth into these units. And God really nailed me at that time. And he said, Ken, he goes, this is you right now. This is your life. And he, and as you're pumping this level up on the day I was going home, he, he gave me a question. He goes, where's my level at in your life right now? And where is the wire that's need to be pulled into your life to provide the power that you need to sustain? And he goes, the power can only come from me. And the plant was in turnaround mode. My life was in a turnaround mode. Mm -hmm. And so I looked over at it, this big compressor being being lifted and hoisted by this big man walk crane. And the compressor is the heart of that unit. And he goes, Ken, I'm doing this to you right now. He goes, I'm pulling your heart out. I'm re I'm re going to rebuild your heart. I'm going to rewire the motor that pumps your heart. And he goes, and you're going to be used for me in a mighty way. And that's where the turnaround, the, the theme came along in the name for my ministry or you need of a turnaround because God can totally take a broken vessel and mend it and put it back together and be used for him in a mighty, mighty way. We look at these chemical plants and refineries and they got boats and they got ships and they got trains mm-hmm. and they got all in these these big vessels that are needed to be filled that can go throughout the United States, but it can't be used and it can't be produced in a broken rundown plant without it being reworked. Same thing in a man's life, the way I feel to where I was broken, but he rebuilt me. And now I'm able to share with my family. I'm able to share with my friends. I'm able to pour into other men's lives because I had a turnaround and so many men are going through turnaround situations and they can be used the way God created them to be to where their family can use them, their friends can use them. But it requires for us to humble ourselves, repent, turn from our wicked ways so we can be used the way God designed us, just like kind of like these chemical plants. When, wow. When, you know. Wow. Yeah, that's some, that's some good stuff, good analogies, because, uh, you know, coming up in my career, I worked in a, a large industrial facility for a number of years also. So I can relate to a lot of that stuff you were just talking about. Um, well, let me ask you this. What do you, you you say a lot of the men need to turn around themselves. Do you think most men recognize that or uh, how do you how do you capture them to help them to understand that they need uh, to maybe turn around from the direction they're going? Well, I figured sometimes that's like a pipeline. And a mm-hmm. pipeline, in order for a pipeline to work, it has to be clear. The pipe has to be clear of debris and mm-hmm. all matter of, of that'll plug the lines. Well, in our lives, I look at it like this, to where sin plugs our lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, bitterness, anger, hatred, and malice, greed. Mm-hmm. If we have that stuff in our lines and our systems, we can't be used and we can't be pump. We can't be pumping the good stuff because the sin's there, and we have to get rid of the sin, and we have to get rid of of all of what this world has to offer us that plugs our lines in order to be used the way God wants us to be used to to give them the gifts of the Spirit: so love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. To where we can fill others with that, but with our lives being plugged with the sin, it can't be used the way God wants it to be used. Yeah, well, that's true. That's true. What do you think most of the, the biggest problem men struggle with today? I think uh, most men struggle with pride. I think a lot of men struggle with greed. I think a lot of men struggle with lust. And that's, to me, the top things that men struggle with and that I deal with, with other men in, in their situation. Do you think they recognize that? I and mean, they're just, and they're just continuing on or do they have to have someone like yourself or uh, another man walk beside them to help them recognize that? Depending on their humbleness. Cause some of them will come up to you and they'll say, man, I'm dealing with this. Or some of them, you just have to be bold enough and just pull them aside and see where the destruction is and tell them about the destruction that you already see. Hey man, mm-hmm. I see this going on. Right. And but pull them aside and you know, not in front of everybody, but just kind of, hey, I notice this is happening in your life. Have you prayed about it? What's going on to where you can create that that conversation that'll initiate a spark and ch- help change the situation in their life? 
Yeah. So, so being intentional in the relationship that you have with the, with the guys that uh, God's put in your pathway yes. is what I hear you saying. You know, yes. you know, recognizing, recognizing the change in their life. So, so tell tell us a little bit about. Uh, uh, I know when you were uh, you and I were together at a conference here this past fall, uh, you were talking about. Uh, uh, what was one of those? It was. I know it was turnaround, but you had you had, had something that rusty bolt. Rusty bolt, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Rusty bolt. What yeah. is that all about? Well, I, sometimes I with a rusty bolt, it takes it, when you have say you're working on your lawnmower, say you're working on your car, say you're working on something in your house, and you have put two wrenches together, and the bolt just don't want to move. But if we were to maybe have put some never seeds or some grease on it before we installed the boat, it would have come easier. Um, but I relate that to a lot of men's lives to where, you know, so many times we could handle a situation with our wives, with our kids. If we would have prayed about it and it would add a little bit of, of God, the lubrication to where God would have been involved. And it's not just you know, just a, like a man on man to where without Christ, Christ to me is the lubrication of our lives to where we can go to him in prayer. We can go to him in the Holy Spirit. But so many times a man gets stagnant and he gets rusty. And when we're needed to be used, we can't be proud apart because we're so we're so rusted and we're so set in our ways and we don't want to budge from our own ways. But God has other ways for us and we need to be pliable we need to be usable to where we don't need to be stagnant and rusted up oh that, that's 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 super stuff and the interesting the interesting thing on what you're doing you're talking about in your bio about using the analogies of your work uh being able to help guys understand you're using a lot of industrial technology and industrial um terminology i should say right and uh that that a lot of a lot of men who, who don't work in a in, in a in a uh uh, manufacturing an industrial process may not fully recognize, but it's it's easy to understand. And, it, and for the, a lot of those guys that do that, it, it, that, that is some great, great stuff. And I appreciate you sharing that because I've never really thought from that standpoint. Well, just and, for an uh, example, you know, just for an example, it's like, well, you, sometimes you tell your wife and your kids, hey, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. And sometimes that's a key word that men say, I don't have time. But if they will use a calendar, every man has a phone. Every man has a calendar to where you could you don't have to use that stagnant word. I don't have time. You can go to your calendar and make time for those priorities in your life, your wife, your kids, and others. And you could it's just one one example of using a calendar and, and prioritizing your day to where you can not use those terms. I don't have time because that's the last thing our kids and our wife wants to hear. Well, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, but oh absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I had a conversation with a gentleman um, here just within the last few days. He wanted to meet with me for lunch on Friday. And and I told him I can't do it. And, uh, and he said, oh, you got something on schedule? I said, yes, my wife. I said, I, I block out Fridays for my wife. Right. Every week. And that's, oh, that that's her so day. Awesome. And, and uh, I said, and, but, you know, she understands what I do. That sometimes I have to travel on Fridays to go to conferences and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't plan anything if I'm in town. Nothing, right. you know. That's her day, and uh, so so yeah, that is so important for men to understand. Uh, they can make time if they if they sit back and just look at it and, and think about some of the things that they need to do. Scripture's pretty. Scriptures are pretty. Um, the Bible's pretty pretty um, serious about men spending time with their brides. You know. With, Right. Ephesians, but Paul writing in Ephesians about honoring your, I mean, being about uh, loving your wife as Christ loved the church. And then Peter writing uh, in his letter about honoring your wife and, uh, and being with her and treating her as, as uh, heirs to, to, to the grace of God. And, right. uh, and, and even telling us guys that uh, if you don't do that, your prayers are going to be hindered. That's right. That's right. <laughs> prayers are going to be hindered. Well, me and so, my wife, we had a date Saturday night. I've been working yeah. a lot of time, but I made sure that I want I, I still date my wife. I, and yeah. it's very important to where you never lose that. And, you oh, know, yeah. to where, 
it's it, in when I go on a date, hey, we, we dress up because I want to make it a special occasion. It's not just hey, let's take let's order takeout or anything like that. I want it to I want it to be real and to where hey, I still open the car door for my wife. I still do those things and pull the chair out and like I don't ever want her to forget the first time we dated and. Same thing with my kids. I take my kids to where I, I'll, I'll have a, a dinner with each one of my boys. Each one mm-hmm. of my boys are different. So as a dad, I want to know they're special. I want to know every, one of them loves football. One of them loves computers. Mm-hmm. The other one loves rockets. And mm-hmm. so, you know, to be a dad and to be a husband, we need to be pliable and we need to know those things. But if we're going to stay stagnant and be not to where – we're not usable. We're just going to rust up and be that old rusty boat. And just to where, Hey, I want my kids to know that, Hey, dad can be here. He can be there. And my wife can know I can do this and I can do that for her. And not just to be, well, he's not going to do that. He's setting his ways or he's doing this. I don't ever be want to be one that I'm setting my ways to where I always, I never want to be that rusty boat when my family looks at me or when other men need help in their lives, two or three o'clock in the morning, Hey man, I'm going through this. Can you help me? Yeah. And, uh, you know, don't just be that rusty boat where you can't be used. Yeah, that's good. And I tell you what, for your kids, it's great for them to see how you, how dad uh, continues to love uh, their mom and, uh, and how he uh, makes time for her and, uh, and supports her in other way. It's great for our kids to see that. In, in so many ways. And even though my kids are out of the house now and they're gone and grown and, you know, it's, it's still very important for them to see that and, uh, and that uh, their mom is loved, their mom is cared for. Well, let's talk about your book a little bit. Uh, in, you know, in your bio, you've got a statement there about writing and publishing a book called, are you in need of a turnaround? Which is your, which is a key word for you. It's a 21 day devotional for men. Tell me this book. Yeah, obviously it's a devotional book, but tell us a little bit more about that book. What's it all about and how'd that come about? Well, um, it took me 12 years to write the book. Uh, I was, I went, like I said, I was going through some things and every, every, it's it's 21 questions, but it's 21 questions that uh, parallel a man's life to, to industry. But uh, one of the questions that I really love and I really talk about is, is your pressure switch about to change state? That's one of them. Uh, are your, are your, are any of your breakers tripped in your uh, breaker panel? But that's how God related to me and uh, to where I wrote it down and I started praying about it. And God gave me a verse for each one of my, uh, my questions. And so it was like, um, and in my, one of the, I was working in a breaker panel and as a man, I looked at that breaker panel and I said, man, I said, every breaker is designed for a different area in my house. And, or I go to a breaker panel at work and every breaker is designed for a certain thing and everyone's different amperages. And so I looked at that, the, the gifts and talents of a man to where, Hey, I'm wired differently than another man, but we all have the same if we have God's power running through us and not the world's power, the world uh, can see God's power through every one of our breakers and gifts and talents to where I know I'm a, I'm a cook, I'm an author, I'm an employee, I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm a brother. And those are some of my, my breakers and that's just one chapter in it. But uh, I talk about that and how we can use our gifts the way God designed us different mm-hmm. than any other man. And another one of my questions is, is your pressure switch about to change state? And I talk about anger in a man's life uh, to where he's not acknowledging the pressure. Uh, he's not acknowledging the switch, but he's actually making something to change to where an anger in a man's life to where he doesn't blow up when he comes home. Uh, maybe when his wife or kids ask him to do something, he takes the time on his way home from work and, and takes care of the pressures and the things that he's dealt with, maybe by calling a brother in Christ before he brings all that home and uh, to where his pressures are ready for his wife and his kids and to take on what they dealt with during the day and not to blow up on them or not to blow up on a fellow, a boss or another employee at work to where you can handle the, the situations and stresses of the day by not allowing your pressure switch 
to change state because I know in a refinery and a chemical plant, when a pressure switch change states, major things can happen. And oh, yeah. It, it, it's not real pretty. Oh, yeah. It could be a bad day for somebody. <laughs> yeah. And my book also, uh, you know, who analyzes you to where you know, every chemical or, or uh, as all goes out of a plant, it gets analyzed. Yeah. And so as a man, before we go out for another man, who analyzes this? Is it God or is it man? Mm-hmm. Are we going to allow God to analyze our, our man? And so we do what God acts, tells us to do. And we live, we live and work for God and we don't live and work for a man. And so that's one, another question who analyzes you, God or not man, but I have some strong brothers in Christ and I have some strong mentors that help guide and lead me. And Hey man, I, I, I'll check my weight to where it's like, Hey, you know, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? Or, you know, this is what God's telling me. Maybe I need some coaching here. Maybe I need some coaching there, but at, at the bottom line, when when God holds me up to that be- at light, because I'm in that beaker, I want to be pure in all my motives. I want to be pure in all my ways to where when he analyzes me, he doesn't see a speck. But I have to work on that daily. I have to, It's a daily, like we carry our cross daily. And, you know, we repent daily of certain things that maybe we've had to do. We, we ran across yesterday. But come always with a clean heart and allow God to analyze us and, and refresh us daily. That's one of the other questions I have. Who analyzes you, God or not, man? I'll tell you what, Ken. You know, you're, you're just such a blessing in, in how you've taken your, your career and, you, and you're using it to really share with the men uh, practical ways and, and help them to see things in, you know, in, a, in, in terms that they may understand. Uh, what their lives might be like, uh, like the rusty bolt, uh, like calibrating and pumping up and, and uh, breakers, breakers tripped. And, um, you know, all those terminologies that I'm very familiar with when I worked in the industry and, and it, it's, and I'm sure a lot of men can relate to that and, and get that. Uh, maybe that's the reason why those, you, you had those uh, full rooms in your, in your conferences. I, I, I don't know, but. <laughs> But uh, you really, you really get down and can speak uh, some of those men's languages. That's great stuff, guy. Um, I give all the praise and glory to him. He, I just, yeah. I just want to do what he tells me to do. <laughs> so, at any rate, I, I, uh, I'm going to have to get your book. Uh, I knew you had it out there. I haven't picked it up yet, but I'm, I'm going to have to get that. How can they get that book? Uh, How you can, can a man get a good, get that book? You can uh, go, Amazon has it, uh, Amazon.com. You can grab the book. Uh, you come to one of the Iron Sharpers Iron Conferences. I'll sign it for you. The other way you can get it, you can go to Westbow Press. They have the book. Uh, my church carries the book, uh, and another other churches carry it in the area. Mm-hmm. But um, that's how you can get a hold to it. Uh, to get a hold of me, you can uh, contact my email. It's uh, paxtonkin at yahoo.com. And you email me. I'll get back in touch with you. And uh, that's how you can get a hold of the book. That's super. Man. And that's great. I, I would encourage you guys out there to do that. If you're looking for a devotional guide to help you get through it, uh, this book is no, no doubt uh, um can probably guys you could probably really relate to this i'm actually looking at the book right now as ken and i are talking about on amazon and and the statement there says when christ taught many times he used the inner workings of people's occupations to help make a spiritual principle more understood and that's exactly what you're doing yes sir. exactly what you're doing yeah and, and and that that is that is just super i appreciate that um, well, Ken, we're coming up on our time a little bit here, and I want to give you a few minutes to really share uh, whatever is on your heart that men need to be aware of um, in their lives, and uh, give you a couple of minutes to just just talk to anybody out there, maybe listening, to, that the Holy Spirit may be uh, uh, speaking into their life right now about what they need to do to be the man God 
has designed us to be. Amen. Uh, like I'm going to go back to my verse, Second Chronicles 7, 14. It says, then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and restore their land. You know, guys out there, uh, we, we're in a we're in a wicked world. We're in a wicked, cruel world, and we can't allow those things of this world to evolve our pipelines to our wife, our kids, and others in our lives that God would have us to speak into. And guys, in order to encourage your wives and your kids, I just want to encourage you. If you have anything in your pipelines, I'm asking you right now just to get rid of those things and. Clear those things out. If there's any major issues that you're facing, I'm asking you to help just to clear those things out because God has designed you in a unique way to minister to your wife, minister to your kids, minister to your co-workers, and you can be such a blessing and be true to yourself. And, you know, guys, so many men have gone through turmoil situations and are broken up and don't feel like they can move on. But I'm telling you, God has a plan for you and he has a way and he's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. He'll put you back together. He'll draw the mighty, awesome gifts and talents out of you in a way that only he can do it. I'm encouraging you today to not stop, not give up, turn around and do exactly what he wants to perform in your life. But it requires for us to step aside. It requires for us to humble ourselves. It requires for us to keep our mouths shut and listen to what he has to say. You know, when he said to humble, I had to keep my mouth, I love to talk, but I learned how to listen through this process. And guys, that's the key to listen to what God's telling you. Listen to what other men are telling you. Listen to what you have to do and perform. And then you can do what God tells you to do. Hmm. Hmm. That's, hmm. Yeah, that, that's, that's good stuff. That's powerful stuff. You know, the interesting thing is that uh, one of the things that I've learned uh, over the years, and it's becoming more prevalent to me as I as I deal with that age old problem of dis, uh, of the uh, aging disease. Um, the uh, is the fact that it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter where you're at in life. If you're still walking on this planet, God's got a plan for you. That's right. And Amen. He, he, he's he's expecting you to do something. Uh, for his kingdom, for the advancement of his kingdom. I, I know a gentleman um, that I've known for a number of years. He's living in an assisted living care center now. He's about 90 years old. And he will tell you flat out, he said, the only reason I'm here is because God's still got a plan for me. He still has work for me to do. And he's put me here in this assisted living care center to do exactly that. And, and I'll tell you what, <laughs> if that's not encouraging and inspirational, I don't know what is, you know, and a lot of times when you look at uh, what God has done in people's lives and what he expects us to do in, in our lives. So anyway, well, Ken, I appreciate you being with me today. It's been an honor to have you on the program and providing this information. And what, once again, will you tell the guys how they can get up with you if they want to uh, reach out to you to have you, um, uh, to do, talk to you or maybe even have you come and speak at maybe a conference they're doing in their local church or just come and talk to their church, to the men of their church. Sure. sure. Yeah. Uh, my name is uh, Ken Paxton again, and my email address is paxtonken at yahoo.com. Contact me that way and I will get back in touch with you and we can we can talk, discuss. If you're having any issues, any burdens, we can talk about it, discuss it, or how you can be a useful uh, men's leader to others, maybe in this area. Uh, but it's it's important to, to reach out to brothers. And Mr. Mike, I want to thank you again for 
having me on your show. I want to thank you for amazing ministry that you have and what God's designed for you to do. And you're doing you're doing so awesome. And I thoroughly enjoyed being up there with you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Uh, you you are a blessing and an honor. And I look forward to Ken and I is going to be together again uh, this coming March uh, at an Iron Sharp Iron Conference in Wilmington, North Carolina on March 19th. Uh, you can go out onto the website of kfearmen.net and find out more about that. Uh, information will be being, being uploaded to that site here in the near future about that conference and how you can register and be a part of that. And uh, and I would encourage you to come. Uh, that's a, That would be a great place for you to uh, to meet Ken and, and hear about Turnaround. And uh, and so I look forward to that in, in so many ways. And, and it's great to great to have you with him. Well, as we close, I do want to remind you, encourage you to check out my new book, The Call, A Journey into Men's Ministry, which you all can also find on Amazon.com or you can go to Barnes & Noble and you find it. And be sure if you, once you get that book and you read it, you leave us a review. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, and we would uh, we will thank you for that. Chinchwell Conversations is a ministry of Cape Fear Men. And if you want to know more about what we discuss on this program or about the ministry of Cape Fear Men, you can contact me at Mike. Dot Sandlin at kfearmen.net. That's Mike dot Sandlin at kfearmen.net. And I will be glad to respond to you and talk to you about anything that you would like to talk to talk about when it, go, when it comes to men's ministry. But for now, I'm going to leave you with a blessing. A mentor used to say over me each time we, we were together. He would say, I pray that God will give you a rock to stand on, a brook to stand, uh, drink from, and a tree to shade you by. So this is Mike Sandlin saying God bless, and I hope you'll join me again on the next Intentional Conversations. Mike Sam.